My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. When you come across a standard voltaic cell, there are a number of things you must remember. The first is that the most reactive metal will be the negative electrode. So if A, as they say, is the most reactive metal, let's assume it's zinc. Zinc and the other metal less reactive is copper. That becomes the negative electrode. And let me show you why. That's simply because the zinc, it's solid, goes to zinc 2 plus, goes to the zinc ion, aqueous, plus two electrons. And those electrons move up this cable, the external circuit, they go through the voltmeter, and they go to, into the copper electrode. And at the copper electrode, at the surface of the copper electrode, they react with the copper ions. Cu2 plus plus 2E goes to Cu solid, and that's of course aqueous. If you accept this, then there are a number of things that follow from this. First of all, this becomes the positive electrode. Next, as the electrons are moving in this direction, electrons, then in this solution, you are increasing the number of zinc ions, and in this solution, you're reducing the number of copper ions. And they're both positive. Therefore, in order to balance it, there must be a movement of negative ions from this solution up into the salt bridge and over into that solution. So in this direction, you're getting negative ions. And if that is copper sulfate, for example, those would be sulfate ions moving up there. In general, salt bridges are usually potassium nitrate, KNO3. It doesn't have to be, simply so long as it's a salt that does not chemically react with either that solution or that solution. The next thing that you come across is that as this is being converted to zinc ions, then therefore the metal here is losing mass, it's reducing in mass. There's loss of mass of this electrode. On the other hand, this one is gaining mass, so it gains it's mass. Having covered all the characteristics of the standard cell, we can now answer the questions. Which statement is correct? The electrons flow in the external circuit from A to B. Well, they do. As I've just said, electrons flow from the more reactive metal, which is negative, towards the less reactive metal. Positive ions flow through the salt bridge from A to B. No, positive ions do not flow from A to B. In this case, it's negative ions that flow in that direction, from B to A. Positive ions flow in the external circuit. No, positive ions never flow in the external circuit, only electrons. Electron flow through the salt bridge. No. You never get electron flow through the salt bridge, only ions. The answer is A, electrons flow in the external circuit from A to B. And if you've understood these characteristics that I've described here, you will be able to handle all the questions within voltaic cell topic. As we saw before, the most reactive metal of the two, iron or copper, is the one that becomes negative. 
and in this case iron, iron is the most reactive metal, therefore becomes the negative electrode and creates electrons that flow in the external circuit. Electrons will flow from copper to iron? No, as I've just said, the electrons flow from the iron to the copper. The salt bridge allows the flow of ions to complete the circuit. Now that is true. The salt bridge does allow the flow of ions to complete the circuit. The salt bridge allows the flow of electrons. No, no electrons flow through the salt bridge, only ions. The salt bridge can be made of copper or iron. No, it's not. The salt bridge is, as in the previous question, made of a solution of a salt in water and is more likely something like potassium nitrate or some other similar salt. I mentioned this in the YouTube video on electrolysis that the voltaic cell and the electrolytic cell do have one thing in common and that is that oxidation occurs at the anode in both of them. So, we have the anode of the electrolytic cell, it will only be oxidation, and since it's the cathode of the voltaic cell, it's not going to be oxidation, it's going to be reduction. So C is the answer. So, the simple thing to remember is that oxidation occurs at the anode in both the electrolytic cell and the voltaic cell. Oxidation at the anode. In both. In this particular question you're not told which element is the most reactive but you should know that magnesium is more reactive than iron and anyway the equation tells you that the magnesium metal is converted to magnesium ions and therefore for it to be converted into magnesium ions it must give off two electrons so the magnesium metal is the negative electrode. The magnesium metal will lose two electrons and produce the magnesium iron. And the iron ions will accept electrons to produce metal iron. What you can see is that the magnesium is the negative because it's the most reactive and loses electrons. And the iron is the positive and is the least reactive and accepts electrons. Magnesium atoms lose electrons. Yes, they do. The magnesium atoms lose electrons. So again, that one is correct. The mass of iron electrode decreases. No. According to this, the iron metal, the iron electrode, is increasing in mass. Electrons flow from the iron half-cell to the magnesium half-cell. No, they don't. They flow from the magnesium cell to the iron cell. Here we see them. It's the magnesium is losing the electrons and therefore they are flowing from that. The electrons do not flow in that direction. They flow in the opposite direction and they would flow through the external circuit. Negative ions flow through the salt bridge from the magnesium half cell to the iron half cell. No, if electrons are flowing away from magnesium through the external circuit, then you're going to get negative ions flowing towards it through the salt bridge. So, A, magnesium atoms loses electrons. That is the correct statement. Again, whether or not you remember that zinc is more reactive than lead, the equation tells you that zinc metal is the one that's going to lose electrons to form zinc ions, and therefore the zinc metal becomes the negative electrode, and the lead becomes the positive electrode. So if zinc metal goes to zinc ions, it is oxidized. So one is correct, the zinc is oxidized. Electrons move from zinc to lead in the external circuit. 
Yes, that's true. They do move from zinc to lead in the external circuit. The mass of the lead electrode increases. The answer is yes. The mass of that lead electrode does increase because the PB2 ions are receiving the electrons and going to the lead electrode. The equation tells you everything. So all three are correct. The equation tells you everything, but I hope you do know that zinc is more reactive than copper. Zinc is the negative electrode because it loses electrons and forms the Zn2 plus ion, whereas the copper ions receive electrons and form copper metal. And therefore, the copper metal is the positive electrode. So which statement is correct when the cell produces electricity? Electrons are lost from the zinc atoms. Again, yes, that is definitely true. The zinc atoms lose electrons. The mass of the copper electrode decreases. No, the mass of the copper electrode is going to increase. The electrons flow from the copper half cell to the zinc half cell. No, the electrons flow from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. Uh, negative ions flow through the salt bridge from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. No, that's not possible because electrons flow from the zinc half cell through the external circuit. And therefore, since they are negative, you must have negative ions flowing through the salt bridge to the zinc half cell not away from the zinc half cell. So the correct statement is the electrons are lost from zinc atoms, A. If you found this YouTube video helpful, then please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.